I was going to be confronted with what he's going to be confronted with. And the boss man would say that uh, I can't take you on account of the South. I think the first thing I do is try to make the South of uh, no value either to him or to me, that uh, I am of no concern because it's hopeless. I believe that's what is happening. Uh, we found that Burke Marshall was talking to him and they're advising with him, but uh, we don't know whether he's comforting them or whether he's uh, uh, advising them another way. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rao and uh, Martin Luther King and folks that normally are run with that crowd are leading it. Humphrey is trying his best to put an end to it, but uh, he hadn't had much luck with them. Now, if they get up there, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for a fellow like Donald Russell or Harrison. He had lunch with me yesterday. I didn't get to talk to him, but he was here. Uh, and you or anybody else from that part of the country with a substantial uh, Negro population, uh, like East Texas or like uh, uh, Louisiana and Arkansas, I think it's going to be pretty hard for them to uh, sit by and let their sister states be thrown out when they were duly elected and uh, are the real uh, uh, proper delegation. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't see how a fellow like Dick Hughes and Governor Lawrence and Dick Bailey, I don't see how they can possibly uh, go back to their states and say they're proceeding uh, uh, the Alabama group and the Mississippi group when they won't say they support their nominees and uh, that's in the call and that's in the rules and that's the loyalty oath, you know, that they worked on for many years. Yeah. So it looks like you just pretty well uh, split the party, uh, uh, well, much worse than go out and rock, tell you. Yeah. And it looks like there are forces that would like to do that. I have no doubt that they claim that uh, they got a Texas oil millionaire messing around up in Harlem. I don't know who it is unless old man Hunt got some money. But Hoover's after it now, and they've got all the communists in. So they both sides are in on these riots, and they're hiring them, and hell, these folks got walkie-talkies, and they got the, uh, these helmets, and they're all dressed up. You just think it is a party they got. Somebody's financing them big. And they go in a different town every night. It's, uh, it's Brooklyn one night, and it's Harlem the next night, and it'll be another section of New York tonight. Uh, and they're kind of getting it on all over the world. I was talking to the Prime Minister of Malaysia, and he's just having a hell of a time with his people riding. He's going to have to cancel his trip and go back home, and there's a great deal of frustration and uncertainty. Yep. So that's what's going to happen between the conservatives uh, of the, 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 the South and the others of the East. Being from the South, I don't think, I think it probably just makes it worse. I don't think you can do any more about it than Keith Offer can do about it. I have, uh, I have uh, handled the Mississippi thing and uh, uh, the Georgia thing uh, in uh, cooperation with both governors and talking to them before they did anything and doing, doing no troops and just uh, trying to help them. And, and uh, I couldn't have handled it better and I, couldn't, uh, I haven't made any mistakes as far as I'm concerned that weren't made before I came in here, namely the Civil Rights Bill. But I think that's right. They can't take it, and uh, when uh, when it gets too hot in the kitchen, they're gonna they 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 just nothing the poor fellow can do about it. Self-preservation is the first law of nature, and uh, uh, now then the question comes. Uh, the governor of New Hampshire today says that in order to carry the North, he's got to be on the ticket, and uh, the uh, UAW worker in Pittsburgh says he's got a hundred thousand signatures, Pennsylvania. Uh, he went out to uh, Illinois last night, and uh, I got a memorandum here from one of my friends that attended the meeting. I haven't read it, but he just gave it to me over in the business of man's meeting at 300. At the reception in Chicago, he spoke and showed films on the library. Those present at the reception included 50 ward committeemen from Cook County and thus represented a substantial part of the Illinois delegation at the convention. One of those present reports that it was largely a political crowd and the meeting had political overtone. We are seeking to determine the extent to which the crowd included civic leaders of the type that one would expect to be invited to the library. 
He was scheduled to be at a meeting at Southside Democratic headquarters at 8 o'clock. A crowd of 2,000 had been turned out by the organization, but he did not show up. An extremely reliable and perceptive observer reports, quote, the consensus among the Cook County organization is that Daly favors the Attorney General for the Vice President, but might not press the matter openly against the President's wishes. Their personal relationship is such that one should assume that anything Daly knows, Kennedy knows. Yeah. Within the last two weeks, Shriver indicated to Marshal Korshak, a key ward committeeman, and to Danny Rostenkowski, the leading congressman, that he is himself under consideration and is optimistic about his chances. Now, uh, I have about come to the conclusion that it is just as, pos just as positive as we're sitting here that he is going to force a roll call on his name for this place or the other place. I think probably the vice presidency at the moment. Uh, he will have some people in every delegation that have been friendly uh, or some way or other, and he'll be in touch with them. And they're going to have an emotional thing with this film and uh, Miss Kennedy and all of them. Then he's going to really make the pitch. Now, most of my advisors here think I ought to call him in now, a month ahead of time, so I can get word to all the leaders and tell them how I feel. And if they don't want me, why, well, it's all right. They can just take him because he will have the nomination if I don't have it. And uh, uh, so I had about concluded that I would give daily until tomorrow. He told me he called me a couple of uh, Thursday, Friday. I'd give him maybe until Friday, and if I didn't have him, I'd ask this fellow to come in Saturday. I expect he'd be out of town, so I won't get to see him on Monday. But say to him that I've given a lot of thought to this, and in view of the polls and the problems in the Midwest and the problems in the border states, not the South particularly, because he knows that, and I don't want him to, I don't want him to use that as an issue on me, that I'm just signing up Mississippi against him. Yep. Uh, uh, but in view of the border states, in view of the Midwest, it just seems to me like that I'll tell him that I'm not going to recommend to the delegation that to take him. He won't argue about it, and they say he's very much against Humphrey. He told Clark Clifford that he he would consider that a great insult to his brother's memory. Humphrey ran against him and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I would tell him that, and my guess is some of them think that uh, he might decide not to do anything about it, but most of them think that he is determined that he wants this job, and he will do anything in the world he can to get it, and if by causing the fight, uh, he thinks that uh, he can probably make me throw the election, and he wouldn't, he'd like to see me a defeated man like Stevenson. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that's one reason he's, he's not unhappy about what's happening in the South. Now, I, I'm not in a position, I don't have anybody that can go in and get Lawrence and get Daly and get Wagner and uh, uh, all the committees owned by them. I have Jack Valenti, none of who nobody knows, Bill Moyer and Walter, that's my team here, the rest of them are their people. And uh, Ken hadn't been in that today at all. I don't know where the hell he is or what he's doing. Uh, he doesn't discuss any of these things. I give him an assignment, but he just didn't do any more about it. Didn't come back. And when this fellow looks at me, he looks at me like he's going to look a hole for me, uh, like I'm a spy or something. Uh, uh, Bobby, he was at lunch today. I had a cabinet lunch with 300 businessmen, all the presidents of the big companies. And I had a wonderful meeting. Most of them said they're going to support me, the Republicans. Uh, yeah, I think they will. Uh, I had a wonderful meeting, and they just applauded the living hell out of us. But uh, uh, he didn't even come in after lunch to hear my report or my speech. Every other cabinet man was there. So um, that's about the way it is. Now, my present intention, uh, although I don't see, I, I think if we just go down and start fighting, maybe the prestige of the office will carry us through. But uh, I think it'll be like Daly says. Daly says, please don't do it. Wait till you get up there. Let some committee, executive committee, come in and tell him, and don't you take the blame of knocking him off because you can't take the South on and the Kennedys on and the North on too and get them all mad at you and let, let us do it up there. Uh, Clark Clifford and others say here that uh, if 
I do that, it'll be too late that they'll be in charge up there, that they're running every day. And uh, that i got to tell him now, and if I can't stop him from the cabinet, he'll probably resign, and uh, uh, then we'll just have to see which one can win. Uh, I, I have uh, the office, but I don't have much to fight with. I, I've got 20 minutes here with you now, but I've got to go to... The reception, the Prime Minister, tell him goodbye, he's leaving. I got to go to Valley Forge tonight at 7.30, speak there. And I didn't sleep two hours last night, and I, did, I, had, I had New Zealand on Monday, and I had all the foreign ministers in Latin America on Tuesday, and I had my ladies on Wednesday and Thursday. And that goes on every day in this job. Uh, we had to send a wire today to Brazil to keep it from turning upside down. We got a problem with Cyprus tomorrow. And I really don't have a moment to even try to pick the keynoter. I think we're going to pick the Pastore. I got McCormick and Albert in there, but we lost the poverty bill by one vote, and then we won it by one vote, and then we had a tie vote. And I'm here in Mansfield. Uh, Mansfield's not much leader, not very interested in it. And he's going to put me on spot next week. He's going to pass a beef import amendment that uh, uh, just ruins my whole trade program. We, we've we got uh, greater exports and farm goods now than we've ever had. They have 30% this year, and a good deal of it's meat that we're exporting right now. We exported $4 million this month. Uh, but he's going to say not import over the five-year average, and we've got it down under the five-year average, but I have to veto it, and then they pass it over my veto, and then that makes every state, Texas, New Mexico, or, or Colorado, 15 meat states makes them all mad and gets him nowhere right where he is. But uh, that's the problem I've got. I can't, uh, Albert's against it, but Albert said if Mansfield passes it, he'll have to pass it. Because he's from a meat district too. Yep. They're like Montana and Oklahoma. So uh, you, those are your problems, and I don't know. Uh, uh, might be this is an easy way that maybe to get out with save your face by just getting beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ain't gonna do that. I don't think so, but no. it's a it's a real difficult one because I don't know what you can do at this convention. And uh, Goldwater's coming in tomorrow. He wants to see me on this problem, and uh, I agreed to see him. And nothing good can come out of that. He wants to use this forum. He wants to encourage the backlash. That's where his future is. It's not in peace and harmony. That's right. And uh, so I guess I just have to listen to him. I really don't know what I can say to him. Well, all you can say to him is that you don't want to make an issue of it, that you think uh, uh, the matter ought to be settled. Well, I know and, uh, it, but we ought to be quieted down. That's all you can say. He, I, I can't say that I won't be for the law, and he's got to be against it because he, he voted against it, and I voted for it. I'm going to do nothing to incite anybody, inflame anybody. I sent the FBI right into harm, just like I did in Mississippi. Sure. But I did so after talking to the governors and the mayors, both. Incidentally, Ferris was very appreciative uh, of his communications and the treatment he got uh, and the cooperation that he had with you in St. Augustine and well, said so. Well, we've, uh, we've tried to put ourselves in the governor's place in every instance. They don't make these situations. They, they, they're not responsible. We're not. But I can't tell Martin Luther King what to do any more than you can, and uh, you can't tell uh, Hunt what, what he's doing. That's right. So that's it's just uh, it's just that black and white, and then there are no grays here. Well, of course, again, I think your great appeal is, and your great strength in this country now is that you're doing what you think is right. And of course, uh, I feel very strongly about it, as you know. And I think you have to take Bobby on in a goddamn fight. Let's take him on. And that's one thing: if you get me out of this goddamn capital and come up and help you, I'll tell you that. If it comes to that, why? Well, I don't know what I can do, but I can carry wood or water. But if, if he wants to book a fight, well, let's have one. But I think he can whip him in a, in a standstill. It won't even be close. I don't think he'll make the fight. And I damn sure agree that, that you ought not to give him running room between now and August. I agree with Clark Clifford and him. I just think you ought to just tell him now. If he wants to do something about it, well, sure, he's got 30 days. But, uh, damn, you've got 30 days, too. And, uh... I'd just go and tell him I'd get it over with, because I'd have a lot of other fight with him, but I told you I'd rather fight with him between now and August than I would the next four years. And I don't think it's any question but what he would try to, he would be delighted to see you defeated. Ain't no question about that in my mind. He's uh, he's an arrogant, he's an egotistical, a selfish uh, person that uh, 
feels like he's almost anointed and he is so power mad that it's unbelievable. And that's the very reason you can't take him on this ticket because most people know it. Now, I've talked to, this morning, I talked to people like Tex Martin who was at your luncheon today. I don't guess he saw you today. California. But, uh, of course, he's a, he's a strong McNamara man, which is beside the point. But uh, he said, hell, fire. He said, uh, McNamara, he's now a Democrat. He knows he's been a Republican. Uh, he said, I'll personally, he told me this morning at 8 o'clock,